Welcome to the third in the Arduino series, part of the first impressions where we are talking about our first impressions of some of the most popular single board computers and microcontroller uh, boards. In this one, we are going to be talking about Arduino programming. So in 1.2, we talked about the IDE and we learned the ins and outs, how to save, how to do all that good stuff. Now with this video, we're going to follow the same format as the last one where after this intro, we are going to switch over and I'm going to jump into the screen capture and we're going to talk about the actual programming language of the Arduino. It is a simplified version of C and it has a little bit of its own nuances that we will cover and we'll do a, a few examples. Well, just one example really and show you how it works. So with that, let's jump straight onto the computer and get the other mic going. Okay, as discussed, we did the Arduino IDE overview in the last video. So now we are going over the programming. So as we jump right into this, we are starting with this blank um, program. This, And we talked about this very briefly last time, but let's just jump into it a little bit. And unlike what Sergey does on the written tutorial, where he kind of goes through a very simple tutorial very quickly and then spends more time on an advanced tutorial, um, I would like to use a more simple example and go through it in more detail and then let you go read his written tutorial for the advanced coding programming thing because that is more his cup of tea and that is why Sergey is awesome. Anyway, moving on. So as you come into this, you notice up here, you see void setup and then void loop. And then you have these brackets here that obviously um, enclose what you are going to have in your setup portion and what you are going to have in your loop portion. And as you notice, it's kind of nice that it matches those right there. So as I have my cursor down next to this bracket, it highlights this one to say, hey, these two are matching, which if you have any experience programming or just a minimal amount of experience programming like myself, this is one of the big things that you you screw up where you're saying, wait, which bracket goes with which? And so it's just a nice little feature that they have in there to make your life a little bit easier. But let's talk about what these are. As it says, put your setup code here to run once, and then for the loop, put your main code here to run repeatedly. That's pretty self-evident, but what you're doing here is you're putting in the setup the things that you only need to do once, like you need, if you had any experience working with microcontrollers, you know you need to say, hey, is this GPIO going to be in I or no, is it going to be an input or an output? How is it going to be set up? If it's an input, is it going to be a digital input or an analog input? And you only need to say that once, and that's where you put it here in your setup. And then the rest of your code you put here in the loop. So when you're doing this, just make sure that you have anything that you only want to run once in the setup. And not only the IO configurations, but if you need to access any external libraries, if you have any peripheral modules that you only want to send a signal to once to give them the correct settings, make sure you put that in the setup. And then also when in the loop, make certain that you're paying attention and that you realize that this will run over and over and over again. So a lot of times you'll if you only want it to run once, you'll put like a while one, no operation in there. So it just cycles over and over again. Uh, instead of repeating the entire thing, it'll just repeat that one command. So just realize that that is something that you will need to be aware of if you don't want this portion in the loop to be run over and over again. So you may think, hey, why don't I just put everything in setup and then nothing in loop? And that's just really terrible practice. And frankly, I don't know if it would work. I haven't tried it. I didn't even think about it until right now because that just doesn't... That doesn't make sense. Don't do not do that. So your main program, put in the loop and anything for the setup, put in the setup. All right, very straightforward. Now, if you have any experience with any other programming like C or C++, you will think, hey, where is my main function? And that actually exists, but they hide it from you. So again, Arduino, besides the incredible help that you get from the community and the simplicity that they create in this, they also make it very simple in the code and they hide this. So instead of you going straight from your code to machine code, it goes through an extra step. It will create, you have your code here, it will create a C or C++, well actually it is C++, a C++ temporary file. And then from that temporary file, it will create the actual machine code. So here we have this and despite it saying void loop, void setup, there's, there's nothing here, right? But if we want to compile this, if we verify this sketch, we will see that it uses 444 bytes of program storage space. 
And that is because it is literally just creating an empty C++ file that has the main function and some other code and stuff like that in there, just to basically say, hey, I exist, even if nothing really is happening. So you can find that code if you are good and you look in the right spot, or you can just go onto GitHub. It's um, basically under the Arduino core-AVR uh, portion of GitHub and you're looking at the master cores, and you can also find it on your own computer somewhere, but it's hidden in different places. But if, if you wanna go look at that and see what the intermediary C++ code looks like, um, as it converts it from your Arduino code into the actual hex file, that is a good adventure, and I recommend you go out and report back on the comments and say what you found. Uh, because that should be uh, pretty interesting. But for us right now, we are just going to go on to the simplest of all examples. And that is, like we used in our last example, the, um, excuse me, yeah, let's just go blink, which I could have gone from open recent, or I could have gone from the examples right here again in blink. So as we look at this, the majority of this code is actually just commentary. So it's in the public domain. It was written by different people. It's talking about what you're doing. One of the nice things about this is that it explains what the point of the code is. And this is so simple. Is this really necessary? No, not really, but it's very good practice. And it's always good to give credit to those people that have put the effort into creating something for us so that we can learn and we can be more straightforward. Now, even though this is extremely simple, if we wanted to, we can go here and go to this link, the slash tutorial slash built-in examples slash blink to get even more detail. Again, not really necessary in this very, very simple example, but a little bit more necessary when you're going into the much more complicated examples when you're controlling displays and you're thinking, oh wait, which exact pin is this switching and how is this going and is there something I can change in the background? So it is really cool to have uh, these resources which not only help you use it, but explain the background if you want to modify it for your own usage. Now with that, even though we have from here all the way up as comment, we only have from, oh man, this void setup down to there, that is the actual code. And even that has two more comments in it and some empty space. So like I just mentioned, we have the void set up. And in this case, we just do the pin mode and we say LED built in and make them an output. Now, once we've said that those are an output, then we just go over to the loop. And it's very simple, digital write. So again, we don't need to say, hey, we need to set up this exact pin and we need to say GPIO three, make it high or make it low, much like we did in our pic 10 f 200 tutorials. We can just say, hey, that LED built-in that we identified, make it high and then delay 1000 milliseconds, which again, if you've looked at the pic 10 f 200 tutorials that we've done, delays are much, much more complicated there. So this is one of those things where it's just beautiful working with Arduino because you can just say, hey, I want a delay of 20 milliseconds, delay parentheses, 20, close parentheses, semicolon, and that's it. It's a wonderful thing. So all you're doing is you are making that pin high, delaying 1000 milliseconds, making that pin low and delaying again. And despite the simplicity, it's very well commented. So it's very clear exactly what's going on. And he did, he did the indentations right here to make sure that you understand exactly how this is all formatted to uh, be within that loop. So if he had another function in here and uh, we wanted to indent it right here, I don't know what we're gonna do is just say while one, even though that's completely pointless in this, um, in this example, I can then go down here, shift it over and hopefully do that correctly. And then now we are pushed in properly and we have the what we need to make it look nice. Now, as discussed in the last tutorial, we could do auto format where it will look for those um, brackets and make it even prettier. I'm actually kind of curious. Let's, uh, oh, holy cow, what am I doing? Let's put that to the, to the test. Um, and let's see if we can do it in such a way that isn't too terrible. Okay, so now we are going to take this void loop and I know I said that this was going to be all about programming and not the IDE, but there we go. Ha, beautiful. And you see, it actually, it lined these two, parenth or these two brackets up 
Whereas when I did it before, that bracket was actually in one. So it does make it look really nice. But that's that's it on the programming. It's very, very similar to C. It just has a layer over it so that it makes it easier. Um, and then one of the beautiful things is because there are so many examples, if we wanted to, we could just go to some other example and say, hey, let's look at the bar graph. This is completely random. Oh, and we're creating arrays. Hey, look at how easy it is to make an array. And you can just learn so much by going through all of these examples. And so if you do have experience with C, you are going to find this incredibly simple. And if you have any experience with other microcontrollers, you might actually be concerned because it's overly simple. But don't let that throw you off. It is that simple most of the time. If you don't have experience with microcontrollers, do know that you are being spoiled. And that is okay. But that as you move on to a little bit more refined and a little bit leaner running microcontrollers and languages, that it's going to be more work. And that's okay, because you'll have gotten a good foundation here of how to set things up and how you should be doing things. Okay, again, if you want a more advanced example, uh, Sergey has a couple of different things on the written tutorial. So as always, go check that out, because he does a fantastic job. And I'm so grateful for him for putting these things together. If you did like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, all that sort of stuff, and we will catch you in the next one.